so it's the windiest day that we've had on Anchor so far. We dragged Anchor. And a lot. We and dragged a lot. lot. Yeah, and we almost hit these guys. Hey, we're Alex and Lars. We recently left Land Life to live aboard our 37 foot sailboat Navica full time. Join us as we document the ups and downs of our life on the water as we sail and explore new places. Welcome back. We're currently in Sardinia on the Costa Esmeralda, which is where we headed to hide out from some strong winds that were due to blow over the next few days. Um, it's in the in the cupboard, like right at the back on the bottom shelf. On the right? Uh, yeah. Lars has just made this incredible pasta. Success. You you have done yourself. Well, thank you. <laughs> so that Christmas tree in the background. That's Dilbar, the longest super yacht in the world, owned by. Alisher is a man of a Russian billionaire and it's worth almost a billion dollars. That's incredible. It's insane. I mean, I, I can't really grasp that amount of money and when you look at it, it's huge. That's the back of it right now. It looks like an island. Yeah. I mean, it's got to have like, I don't know, 20 stories? Yep. Apparently it has 80 crew. 80 crew. And crew members and 40 can take up to 40 passengers, right? Mm. And that's probably like 40 passengers in their own rooms mm. with like en suites. But they basically have a spot here the whole time, don't they? We've seen that we saw them in Antib before, didn't we? Mm. There's a big mooring ball. Yeah, just out in there front. Just for Dilbar. <laughs> I've just woken up in the middle of the night to like just have a check. Yeah, it's quarter to five. It's really, really windy tonight. Well, it's weird. It's, it's like, gusty, right? It's it goes from gusty. nothing. Yeah. Like, here comes one. And it's pretty impressive, you know, the whole... The force on the lines, the force on the anchor and everything. You, you kind of... It's hard to imagine before you're in it. Mm. It's hard to imagine how much it's going to pull on the lines, because it's really thick. Yeah, I was going to say, we've probably got chafe, right? I went and checked it, it looks, all looks okay. Really? It feels like it's chafing. It, it is bridge. chafing a little bit. We need to get some chafe guards. Just went out to check, like, is there anything that's going to blow away? I mean, we did all this before we went to bed. I knew there were a few things out, right, that I didn't put away. Yeah, I lowered the dodger as well to kind of reduce some Yeah, of the I wondered about that too. Pretty windy. Woo. We just we've been looking at the wind generator to see how many amps it produces. So far we've seen it gets fifteen, right? It's quite okay. quite good. I was just trying to figure out how much the solar is giving us and then oh, yeah. how much the fridge is taking out. You should just get the clamp meter and you see how much it says. Yeah, I think I'll do that. Clamp meter. That's what I call it. I That's exactly it. what it's called. Is it? Yeah. <laughs> and I wanna get this water out my ear. Oh no, you have an ear infection, right? Yeah, small one. Ouch. Well, I guess we're stuck here for a couple of days. It's going to be pretty intense recording stuff with this wind. And it's only picking up, and tomorrow's even worse. Really? Yeah. Tomorrow's worse? Yeah. Okay, well, better have to do it then. Having a wind generator just makes sitting on anchor and stuff really nice. Spin, baby, spin! Every time we anchor, we attach this cradle to the anchor chain. This takes the force off the anchor windlass and onto the strong cleats that are on deck. And since we knew there was a lot of wind forecast, we ran the cradle lines back to the cleats at midships. This gives us more stretchy line to absorb the strength of the gusts without yanking on the anchor chain. I'm uh, changing the uh, maximum voltage. Oh, can you turn off the Bluetooth on my laptop? I'm changing the ma maximum voltage on the... Uh, wind generator because it only is charging up to 13.6 volts and then it dumps all the rest of our beautiful beautiful wind power into these resistors and I want more more power oh 
Oh yeah, that's more like it. So it's the windiest day that we've had on Anchor so far. Uh, it's gusting about 40 knots. And everything seems to be holding okay. Thank you, Mantis. <laughs> um, but uh, you can kind of hear it. It's uh, pretty intense. So I'm just curious to see how the anchor's holding up, what it looks like, how deep has it dug in, are we dragging at all? Let's go see. It's pretty good practice to go and dive on your anchor when you get somewhere new to check that everything looks good and that the anchor is holding, and even more so when there are strong winds forecast. Specifically, we go down to check that the anchor is nicely dug into the sand and that the chain isn't wrapped around anything. We also check for any signs that the anchor might be dragging, like a long trail behind the anchor. Lars was pretty happy with how this looked. The anchor had completely buried itself in the sand and didn't seem to be dragging at all. Everything looked pretty healthy. And this hook is how the cradle that we talked about attaches to the anchor chain. And a lot. We and dragged a lot. Yeah, and we almost hit these guys. We're so close to them. Uh, I've got to go flake. Yeah. There's like 40 knots. Cat over there came uh, and told us. He just came by in a stingy to let us know. It's a little worrying to be honest because we bought a really good anchor and we've actually dragged on it and Lars dived on this morning. I mean, this is about where we were in relation to the boat when we were anchored before, here. And we were, and we were on the other side of it when he came and told us that we dragged. Amazing that we didn't hit them. Yeah, I know. Because we were so close, we must have gone the whole way past them, right? Yeah. I can't believe it. We quickly lifted anchor and reset further away from the other boat. This time we dropped all 70 metres of our chain and the anchor held from then on. Once we were safe again, we sat down to try and figure out what had gone wrong and what we could have done differently. So, just some thoughts before we put a video out there of showing like a mantis anchor dragging um, and creating, you know, a bit of discussion on why that happened and what we could have done to prevent that. So, in the stress of the moment, we didn't really get to film what exactly happened there um, because it wasn't a very comfortable moment. But basically, we were just down below, and we were working. I was on my laptop, Alex was working on her laptop, and things seemed pretty normal. The wind was the same as it had always been. I'd been down to check on the anchor just a couple of hours before, and everything seemed fine. And uh, suddenly, we just hear somebody outside the boat saying, Navika, Navika, come out! And I ran up, pretty much knowing exactly what had happened at that point. You know, there's really no other reason for somebody to be yelling at your boat when it's that windy. And um, as soon as I come up, I could see the boat that was previously behind us was now just in front and on the side of us. And there was actually a moment where I just got very confused because I could see that that boat still had its dinghy on board and then there was then there was this guy in the water in his dinghy and in the confusion of the moment I was like, Where, where'd you come from? <laughs> and him also being confused and stressed out misunderstood my question and he was like, I'm, I'm, from, I'm from Italy. <laughs> <laughs> and then both of us were like, what are we talking about? Anyway, do you need help? Um, and um, he was so nice, such a, such a helpful guy. And I just started the engine up straight away and we were able to power up against the anchor. That was a pretty crazy moment. And it really, 
surprised us that we dragged anchor you know you you pay good money for the anchor and it's so important when you're living on board every day that your anchor actually holds you and keeps you safe and that you don't have to think about it and that you can get on with other things and be relatively confident that it's holding and we felt like we'd done everything right you know you saw in the video that i had gone out and checked uh the anchor several times it was dug in nicely um we had a scope of eight out which the scope is just the um, how much chain to depth you have out so we were in about four and a half meters of water and we had over 40 just over 40 meters of chain out we had 10 mil chain and the anchor is 25 kilos for anybody who's interested and still we dragged and we dragged pretty significantly and it put us in danger because we could have hit the boat that was right next to us and if somebody hadn't come and told us that we were dragging we would have dragged onto the rocks in minutes um, and if that had happened at night then it could have been a pretty bad situation. So just some thoughts on why it happened and what we could do to prevent that from happening in the future. When we, when the wind started picking up, we had about sustained 40 knots. It was gusting up to about 50. What was happening was the boat was surfing on the waves and kind of surfing back and forth like this. And at the end of each sort of turn, there was a huge amount of force on the anchor chain as the boat was kind of coming around again, because we have a pretty heavy boat it's like 11 tons so you get all this momentum and then and then the force to kind of pull the boat around like that and i think that's what happened is that in that sort of moment it was just enough force to tug on the anchor enough combined with the fact that the sand is maybe a little bit fine there and a little bit light that the anchor was able to just jump and pull through the sand a little bit we think that's what's happened our confidence has definitely been knocked a little bit with the anchor, but um, maybe that's kind of a good thing to be a little bit more vigilant and not trust it too much. But then we re-anchored and we put more scope out, so we put out like 70 meters of chain, um, and of course then we didn't move at all and then things were completely fine. So I think the, the lesson for us was, when in doubt, put out more scope. And the only reason that we hadn't done that was because this other boat behind us came in and anchored afterwards and whilst it was already windy and they just anchored right behind us, we didn't have the space to put out more scope. So we just left it figuring that a scope of eight, you know, in theory is enough. But just with this sort of slaloming back and forth, there's those moments of intense pulling that you just need a lit you need more scope to be able to absorb that. So yeah, hopefully it hasn't happened again since. Um, hopefully it won't ever happen again. Um, or at least uh, not without us knowing because that was a pretty scary moment and could have ended up pretty pretty bad I hope that's interesting and helpful to anybody out there. I Still would recommend the anchor. It's uh, it's a good anchor and is held in almost all other conditions But like any anchor, I think it you know, it's uh, it's got its limitations. Maybe we should have gone one size up Maybe we should have got the 35 kilo version given the weight of our boat, which is not something that we'd considered so much, that the, the actual weight of the boat is can put a lot of force on the, on the chain as it moves around. Um, so maybe one size up would have been better. There you go. We hope you found this video interesting and that you can benefit from our experience here. Let us know in the comments if you have any questions or if you've had any anchor scares yourself. Next time, the wind dies down and we finally get to go on land and explore Sardinia for the first time. Lars takes a look at our autopilot and we feel a bit out of place sailing down the beautiful Costa Esmeralda, the most expensive location in Europe.